We're back with the one and only Yasmin Alich in LinkedIn's Scroll Stopping Secrets for Lasting Impressions. So we are going deep and we are also helping you, especially if you're newer to LinkedIn, in terms of what to do during your first month there. And you can breathe easy because you don't even have to worry about writing content. Secondly, we are exploring some sleuthy ways to be able to find people that aren't posting on LinkedIn and liaise with them. So good workarounds. And lastly, Yasmin is going to share why he gives away 100% of his tips and strategies and why you should too. All right. So tune in right now. If you want to optimize your LinkedIn profile, you have to pay attention to three key areas. First, the banner, the most visual part of your profile. People are looking at this first. As soon as they open up your profile, they're looking at your banner. That is where they also spend the most time, on average, on your profile. Then they're going to be looking at the headline. Then they're going to be looking at the links. Then they're going to be looking at the featured section. So the way to optimize your profile is to really guide them from top to bottom into an action. What is that action? You decide that. The idea of job security is outdated as a landline. If you haven't been in a search for a while, it's probable you will at some point, by choice or not. Most executives admit to staying way too long or sense what's coming and justify staying anyway. Here, there's another reason. The faulty belief that navigating to what's next will inevitably be worse and has to suck. Screw that. Lauren Greif has spent a lifetime in corporate and executive search, calling bullshit on stale career advice that most still use. This is Career Blast in a Half, the career podcast for executives ready to cut past outdated career advice to fuel your outcomes now. So let's go. I always tell people, if you want more newsletter subscribers, get them to the newsletter page. If you want more bookings, get them to the booking page. If you want more inquiries about a particular service, do not, for the love of God, do not lead people to the homepage of your website. Lead them to a very specific page, okay? Lead them to the page where the inquiries are. Do not lead them somewhere else. I see this mistake a lot where folks, folks lead others to the homepage of their website. And then what do you do? You lose control. You have no idea where they're going to click. You have no idea where they're going to go because you have the about page, the service page, contact page. You have no clue where people are actually going to go. Then again, you take it one step back. What is my goal? I want people to subscribe to my cohort. Where am I going to take them? To the freaking cohort page. Right? If you, again, if you want people to subscribe to something else, to a YouTube channel, lead them to the YouTube channel. If you want folks to book a call with you, maybe a discovery call, a free call, maybe a one-on-one coaching call, which is a paid call, lead them there. Again, do not ever give people choices, which is kind of where the whole marketing um, conversation starts in a negative way. It's like, Jay, but shouldn't we actually give people choices? Let, let, let them decide. Guys, remember what I said about the LinkedIn profile. It is a one-shot landing page. Mm. If you don't tell them right away what you want them to do on that particular profile, they're not going to know. They're going to do something completely unexpected. So if your goal is to grow the subscribers for the cohort, give them that. As simple as that. Do not make it complicated for people. Make it crystal clear who it's for, what do you do, where do they click. That's it. As simple as that. Three key places. Banner, profile link, featured links. Same exact offer. Now we have have this wrapped up. We have a rocking and rolling profile. So now my time that I spent on that is secured. Now I have my landing page, my one and done. Like I got it going on. Next day. I'm back in the saddle. What do I do? How do I spend my time? Where do I scale it? What's a good use of time? What's a waste of time? Yeah. So on LinkedIn, I feel like most folks, the very natural reaction as soon as you jump on LinkedIn 
is how do I get the most reach to my profile? How do I get people to reach out to me? Oh, let me start posting content. Like that's a very natural reaction. To be fair, if you don't already have a good follower base, you could post all the content you want. You're probably not going to get that much reach. Like that's just the reality of it. The much better time investment, at least at the very beginning, is in the comments and in the DMs. So I, I talk about commenting a lot on LinkedIn. I'm known for my comments. I'm known for my commenting strategies. LinkedIn themselves have featured those commenting strategies. So what I usually tell people is, if you're not ready to post content, don't push it. Don't force it. Because everyone's going to see that it's forced. It's not mm -hmm. going to come across as genuine. The quality is not going to be there. You yourself can probably say, oh, yeah, I just did that because I felt like I needed to. No, don't do it. Instead, invest the very first month just connecting with people. Go out there and leave comments. Comments, not posts. Comments on other people's content. And you don't necessarily need to spend a whole lot of time here. You just need to be in the right places. So if you're a CEO looking for a very specific type of customer, let's just use that as an example. You go where those conversations are, where those types of customers are hanging out. So if you're in the healthcare space and you need clients to buy your um, SaaS product, like healthcare SaaS, digital health, you go where the healthcare conversations are. You go where that exact problem you have solved with your SaaS you go where those conversations are about those problems. One simple search in the, in the LinkedIn search with that keyword, like whatever that problem is, you're going to get a whole lot of posts of people talking about it. You can follow those searches. Like you can actually visit what people are talking about on that particular keyword every single day. Five comments a day. That's all you need. That's like 10 minutes. 10 mm. minutes. Every single day. Every you can single leave day, five, five comments. comments. Five comments a day. And so... In the world of job seekers, I hear this a lot. I, I'm curious mm. what, you, what you're going to um, come back with is the people in my industry, they're not posting, right? They're not posting. Financial services, they're not posting. Um, the, the, the person that I think is going to be my hiring manager, they're not posting. And so now I've been dead-ended. So now I can't do it. Now what? <laughs> Where do you go from here? So. One of the things I like to tell folks when they come to me with, yeah, but my target audience isn't posting, right? Right. I have two solutions for that. One is you either just skip all the steps and go straight to them. Like just send the connection requests, you know, tell them what it is, how I would like to connect. I'm here doing this. Or you can even be very straight like, um, I'm, I'm here for a job. That's it. I would like to connect with you should opportunities in the future arise. Could you please have me on your, you know, on your list? That's it. Be very open about it. Don't be too salesy. Like, don't make it seem like you're only there for that. No, just, hey, Lauren, I really love what you're doing. I know you worked in, in XYZ space before. It would be great if we stay connected. I think I can contribute there. So if you know someone, cool. If not, I would still like to stay connected with you. That's it. Just send them mm -hmm. a genuine connection request. Like nine, nine times out of 10, you'd accept that because it sounds genuine, right? Sure. The other thing I tell folks, in terms of finding content on topics where you feel like, yeah, people are not posting, try to find the next topic that's adjacent. So, for example, if we're talking about personal branding, personal branding specifically, what's next to that? Branding. Branding, right? Or leadership. Mm -hmm. Or marketing. Mm -hmm. Or design brand messaging. Any one of those topics, essentially go one step further out. Don't go inside the niche. Go mm -hmm. outside the niche in terms of topicality. And this gets a lot more apparent in those spaces where you feel like there aren't a whole lot of conversations. Like you mentioned financial services. What's next in line? Like what's outside of the niche of financial services? Money. You know how many people talk about money on LinkedIn? Why not find those posts every single day where you could provide some sort of insight 
about the challenges that your type of customers are facing so that you could offer them the financial services. I'll give you an example. I did this at the very beginning of my journey and it was so good for my conversions. It was so good for getting new, in those cases, you know, job offers, but it was really clientele and good connections. So I was chasing, quote unquote, chasing uh, CEOs, C-suite executives. But I understood that for them, all they were looking for is authority or thought leadership in the space. So they weren't posting. They really weren't. They weren't even active. They were just lurking around in the shadows. So my strategy, Lauren, this is going to sound so stalkerish. So what I was doing is I was like, where, what would they be interested if they're into thought leadership themselves, if they're into leadership content? Like, what are they interested in anyhow? And I was like, there's a whole lot of leadership content out there first. Let me just check that out. Like, why not? And what's outside of leadership? Like, if we just take, you know, the corporate world and C-suite executives, like, what's outside of that? It's leadership in general. There's hiring and searching for a job. There's personal development. All of these things sort of, like, expand that umbrella in terms of topicality. So I was looking at all of those posts on those topics. And I was actually leaving my comments in a very specific way. What I was doing is I was selling without selling. Every single time I would come across a post around time management for personal development, because remember, I was following those posts on personal development. And we were talking about time management. I would write my comment in a way that showcases what I've done for other CEOs in terms of time management. So my comment on those posts would be something like, oh, this is so spot on, Lauren. Most of the CEOs I work with, they don't have two or three hours per day to spend on LinkedIn. So what I do when I coach them is I help them create systems and you know, save them time where they can achieve the same thing in 30 minutes in a day versus three hours a day. And it works and everyone, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's happy. You know, I'll, this is just me real time commenting. But what I've just done is I've told that person, whoever's listening and lurking from the shadows, actually following the, that content because I know they are. They're just not actively engaging, but they're 100% watching and learning and, and, and reading those posts. What I've done is I put myself on their radar without me even knowing. So where does that conversation end up? It usually ends up with them sliding into my DMs, the inbound way. So that's way number one. There's also a way number two that I told you was a bit stalkerish, okay? Way number two was I was actually scrolling through all of those comments. So if there was a post on personal development and I was actually looking for burnt out CEOs, I would be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And if I found just one or two comments from CEOs where I saw that they were actually engaging, so they took that one step, they took the first step, they left a comment. And then I visited their profile, Lauren, and I see they had no posts. But then I click on the comments tab and I see that they're actually here and there leaving some comments. So they want to do this LinkedIn thing. They just don't know how or they're not ready. They haven't found the right person. Mm -hmm. So you know what I do to put myself on their radar? I reply to their comments. Mm -hmm. I actually put people in my list. So just to backtrack, just to give you a step-by-step -step of what I do, how I used to stalk CEOs and you know, put myself on their radar, I would search for those posts where I knew they would potentially be engaging. I would scroll through those comments to find those ICPs or ideal customer profiles. And I would take a look at their profile and take a look at their comments, their comments specifically. And LinkedIn is going to tell me when they left that comment. And mm -hmm. if the comment, for me, the goal was find a fresh comment, something that happened within the last hour. So if mm. I saw that they left two, three comments like 15 minutes ago, 16 minutes ago, 17 minutes ago, I would actually click on that and leave a reply. I would leave a reply, just a very positive reply. There was a you know, guy named David, and he commented on some random guru's personal development post, and I would just leave a comment. I agree. I actually needed this advice so badly. And yeah, thank you, David, for your insights, something like that. Wow. Okay. So 
So I just and there was a next step, Laura. Oh my god! There was a next step. I would put all of these names in a list in a Google Sheet, and I would track the interactions I had with them. I would track the actual replies that they've left to me as well. So if I only replied to them, I would just put one, right? Mm -hmm. If they replied to me, you know, until they did, it was a zero. So I would be tracking how many interactions we had. After five to 10, I would really sort of measure the level of familiarity I had. And then I would do the outbound thing. I would reach out. I would send them a message. And I would, I would say, hey, David, love chatting with you. Um, in the comments, I feel like it's time we connect. Uh, maybe there's something we could do together. That's it. That's okay. it. Wait, that level I, is of it okay if I summarize this? Everything. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to summarize this and I want you to correct me if I fall off. Yes, please. Okay. If they're not commenting, if they're not writing their own posts, your workaround is essentially to go find the adjacent topicality, look in, in, in the comment queue. Yes. And find, and find that person who you want to engage with, leave your comments. What I understood too, and this is super, super important, and I appreciate so much that you put some kind of um, benchmark around this, right? You didn't go the first time and start, <laughs> you said you were stalking them, but you also gave them a little space, right? So you, you built that up. You made it, made it clear. You tracked it at about the five, 10, mark, 10 time mark interaction. Then you went and put yourself officially on their radar. Up until that point, you guys are just dating. And then you actually like are, are like showing up with the flowers. So I think this is genius because it takes the, I guess you could say the excuse away from expecting that there's only one way in through the actual content, which we've all been, I think, mostly trained to be looking for right and then we're like oh sorry we can't do that because it doesn't work so here's your worker and thank you so much for that that was really yeah, really very true you see very juicy very true the funny thing about this lauren is the more you do this the better you're going to get at commenting and the more mm. attention your comments are going to get and that's what i've done i've sort of cultivated this culture of commenting where mm -hmm. I really make sure that whatever I leave as my comment is not just for one person. It's not just for the author of the post. It's for everyone potentially reading that post so that with one comment, I'm not just attracting one person. I'm attracting dozens, possibly hundreds, if a post goes viral, which is a huge bonus. Is this so, why you don't put the person's name there? I ask this question. Is this why you don't, don't put at Lauren or at Jay or at Craig. Is that so? Why? When I leave the first comment, Ooh, I've when I wondering. leave the first comment on a post, meaning the main comment, I will typically write something super insightful that relates to everybody. And if it's a longer comment, only at the very end would I tag the person because I'm eliminating this so called perception of one directional conversation. Like, Lauren, if you posted something, right, and your post went, went viral. I have a whole slew of people I could be converting in your comment section. Like mm -hmm. I have potentially so many clients that I could be converting. Imagine if I just left the comment, this was brilliant, Lauren. Thank you so much for this guy. I couldn't agree more. Who is that mm -hmm. comment for? Not for the hundreds and thousands of people reading that post that just went viral. It's just for you. Quite literally, it's just for you. But. If I first left my insight, like something super duper additional and insightful and valuable, and then I said, thank you for this post, Lauren, this was super insightful, you're a gem. Then that comment is not just for you, it's for everyone reading that particular post. So people are then drawn to what I just wrote. They're going to be replying, they're going to be liking, they're going to be visiting my profile, best believe. Just because I understand that, it is my way in. Okay. So does this also mean, I have to ask this, that it does not risk you being notified? So if, if you don't tag the person, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're thinking, oh, well, how are they going to know that I was there, right? 
How are they going to know that I populated their their comment? Thank you. So on your own post, you would get notified. But if I'm replying to another person's comment, they will also get notified. If mm. I'm replying to their comment, the mm. bonus is. Sometimes those notifications don't work <laughs> properly, like they're just not distributed properly sometimes. So the bonus is you can always tag the person. Like in the first comment that I leave, like that's not a reply, just main comment. I might not tag the author, I might not tag anyone, but in replies, I always try to tag the person. Mm. Unless it's, you know, I see. unless it's your profile, you're going to get the notification anyway. <laughs> wow. Can you please talk about your giving strategy. I've, I've coined it the giving strategy because oh man, one of the things that I think that you're going to get me in trouble, up. Lauren. This is one where I always get in trouble for with, with a lot of people. I'll come bail you out of jail. You know that. You're not going to get in trouble. I'll come beat that okay. out of doors. Because you give away like so much. And so if you're, if you're an executive or you're in the job search or you're like somebody that's even building your presence why are you giving away all your trade secrets yeah very true that's a that's a great question so as lauren just said i have this give 100 percent strategy on linkedin and it works it works like a charm and a whole lot of people probably half the world's probably using it right now just because you what you give on linkedin is the sauce you give it away but as far as the impl implementation goes, not everyone's going to implement it. Not everyone's ready to implement. Not everyone's able or enabled to implement what you just shared. And I'll give you a perfect example, Lauren. You and I, let's try to find something that you and I both are not experts in. Something that we would like to do one day. You know what I would like to do one day, Lauren? I would like to Tell build me. my own city. I would like to build skyscrapers, build super cool buildings. Like I would I like to build my own school for someone. So let's, let's say you and I right now, we go to Google, we type in how to build a skyscraper. I guarantee you, Lauren, with enough research, or if we follow the right people on LinkedIn, with enough research, with enough data that we have, we will 100% find every blueprint, every measurement, the list of materials we need down to the milligram down to the time, down to the millimeter, down to how many people we need to hire, how many cents and dollars we need to spend, we will find 100% of the things we need to build that freaking skyscraper. But are we? I mean, we'll find we it, but I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm going to be wearing like my... Yeah, it's going to be cool that we have that information at our disposal, but we, we're right. not going to do it. Why? Because we're not the experts. Mm -hmm. We're not architects we're not builders we're not gonna do it it looks cool that i understand it it feels nice that you're giving it all away but unless you're equipped with the knowledge from an actual expert or at least you have a guidance from an expert you yourself probably won't be able to do it you won't even start doing it you won't even think of doing it so my strategy on linkedin is share everything i quite literally and I get in trouble for this, Lauren. I share it all. Like people have asked me like, why don't you put this in a freaking course? Like, why don't you assemble a course for this? No, why would I? Let it be out there. Because the thing is, I'm never sharing everything in one single post. I'm sharing bit by bit by bit, piece by piece across hundreds of posts, potentially thousands of posts, including comments. Because the comments for me are like mini posts. So. What ends up going on is every single time people see my name in the feed, in the comment section, every single time they're learning something from me, every single time I'm saying something valuable, every single time my brand authority increases, and every single time people are like, this guy knows his stuff. But again, because it's spread around hundreds and potentially thousands of pieces of content, the give 100%. It doesn't just have one part. It's not one hole. It's right. 500 holes, if you will, right? It's 500 different pieces. And that's what, what people don't understand. It's not like someone can just say, oh, give me all of Jay's strategies. And no, they're going to have to do 
extensive research and following and collate all that data. No one's doing that. No one's doing that for sure. What they're going to do is the easy way out. They're going to book you for a call. They're going to hire you. They're going to pay you to do it. Because who better to trust to build that freaking skyscraper than the expert you already know and love, the expert you learned it from, right? When people are like, Jay, I learned so much from you already, and they're paying for the coaching. And I'm like, well, why are you paying if you learned it all? Well, I need your guidance to implement it. Well, that's exactly the point of my strategy. I'm giving it all away because I'm showing you I can do it. I'm showing you that I'm successful at doing it for other people. But then when it comes to implementing, I guarantee you 99.9% of people, they're not ready to implement themselves or they're simply not able to implement uh, all all of that themselves. They need expert guidance. So even Mm. if you share everything, you're just going to get more and more and more in return. That's the strategy. I, I worship that strategy. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe in scarcity. I don't believe that, you know, ooh, you know, you're going to give it all away. And, and, and then, you know, for some reason you're, not, you're a one down position or somebody's going to steal it. Let them steal it. Let them use it. Let them enjoy it. Let them get some benefit from it. It's not like there's going to be, it, 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 there's going to be a drought, right? You're going to have more, more to give. And, and that really is one of the hallmarks of an expert, right? It's not like you're going to just run out of ideas or run out of different innovative ways to, to tackle the XYZ challenge. So I'd love, love, love to ask you to join us in some signature questions, but I also want to ask you if you'll do a little rap for us. Oh, no. Come on, Lauren. You can't ask me that. I retired. <laughs> oh, can't you come out of retirement? Just nah, you know, you the, only, the only time I actually rap, and I kid you not, the only time I actually rap is in my car when I'm with my son. I don't, I don't do it otherwise. People have tried okay. at conferences, at keynotes, at workshops. We'll my students have tried. Your son. Yeah. We'll let it I be taught at the university, you. Lauren. My students have tried, and they didn't convince me to rap in front of them, in front of the auditorium. No. Nope. No. All right. All so, right. Well, sorry, maybe, but no. It's okay. I, I respect that. I just want to let that be a sanctuary with you and your son in the car. Thank that you. That was a good excuse. I'll, 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 I'll take that one. So I'm, I always ask this question because I need these post-its. This one says failure. One way it didn't work out. <laughs> I have to remember this. What's your post-it? What's your post-it when it comes to LinkedIn? What is the, what is the thing that cuts through all the noise and, and is like, somebody's going to say, Hey Jay, that's what Hey Jay said. So tell us what it is. I have, I have probably dozens of quotes that are circulating around LinkedIn regard, regarding branding and people are sharing those all, all, all over, all over social media. One of the, one of the bigger ones is people come for your content, but they stay for you. Mm-hmm. That is that is a really big one in terms of personality and authenticity in your content. But what gets me going, Lauren, is super two super short quotes, and they're they're my all time favorite quotes. One of them is they're actually both two worders, so just two words in both of them. One of them is "givers get." Mm. That's it. Givers get. Give to get. The other one is "winners fail." Mm. And that one, especially recently with all the algorithmic changes and the drop in the reach and the impressions, like today I deleted a post. I posted and I saw my impressions got halted. Like it, it was just dead. The post wasn't moving. I have a gazillion followers, but the post is dead. And I'm like, I'm not going to waste a perfectly good piece of content. I deleted it, but that's a failure. Today I didn't post. I'm probably not going to get as many followers. I'm probably not going to convert a whole lot of people, which is fine. T- tomorrow we get up, we go to practice, we you know, shoot the ball again. So for me, it's, it's a symbol of the journey, really. Um, and, and, and there's an analogy I like to use. I heard this somewhere in a podcast. It's the heart analogy, the heartbeat. Life is essentially like a heartbeat, Lauren. There's the ups and there's the downs. And there's the ups and there's the downs. Like, ideally, wouldn't it be really nice if we could just keep it somewhere in the middle? Like, it doesn't always have to be super perfect. And please let it not always be at the bottom. Like, can we just leave it 
so-so in the middle. But you know what happens to a heartbeat when it flatlines? We're gone. That's not life. That's not life. You know? So to me, that's a reminder that winners fail too. Jordan Mm -hmm. has missed many shots. Is he still the GOAT? Yes. Curry has missed game-closing shots. I'm an NBA buff. Is he still the greatest shooter ever? Yes, he is. You know, there's, there's way too many examples we can use of goats in their space failing. Does that make them less than? No. Even the greatest winners have failed, not once, but many times in their careers, us included. And that's just something that keeps me going, even on a bad day. Winners fail, baby. Winners fail and we keep going because I feel like, you know, I'm a winner. Let's just keep going. Okay, That's did, you my find your, Winners fail. did you find your prop? Did you find your prop? I actually I did. Know, I, I, can, yeah. I can go and Here. find. So we can, with the magic of editing, people, in three, <laughs> two, one. So go let me go and grab my book and okay. I'll come back. Okay, you come back. And I am back. All right. Perfect. Because it's Let just in time. It's just in time. Okay. Here you go. Yes, I man. have my okay. crystal book. Much like right? you are. Much yeah. like you. So this is one of my favorite books. Last time I spoke to Chris on his podcast, I told him this. This is probably one of my favorite marketing books of all time. And it's funny because this is supposed to be a design book, but there are so many cool nuggets inside, so many little Easter eggs to to the way it's formatted and everything that's inside. Like, just look at the design of this thing. Like, it's so cool. Like, everything is just, I mean, every page is a little post-it note, essentially. Slightly longer, but to be fair, it's very digestible. And that's what I love. And so... When you were sharing this, you, you told me that you just like randomly like thumb through it and pull out a something something and, and take a read, right? Is, I mean, it's, are you reading it all at once? How, how do you digest it? To be fair, I usually take this on trips and I usually read it in the airport lounge. Like I'll, this is literally how I read it. I'll take the book and I'll randomly open to someplace. Uh, where did I open it? Oh. Think like Gucci. Okay, Mr. Christo. This is about luxury brands and discount designers. I really like this analogy. And then it's about budgeting and then it's about pricing, price bracketing. I really like it just because every single time I read, it either sparks me to think of things in a new way or it prompts me to write a post about something, you know, something relevant to me and my audience. Like it could be about pricing, could be about um, how to handle clients that lowball you, things like that. So, yeah, Chris Doe. By the way, I don't know if you know, but I have a whole slew of books from from other LinkedIn creators, like oh, just like yeah. friends. This oh, is a great book. If I can Kofi. plug it, if I can plug yes. it here, plug Mr. It. Kofi. Kofi's. Yeah, Kofi Duhaji or Kofi, as he say, Unbroken Optimist. I just this got is it. This is such yeah. a cool book about perseverance and it's just, i mean whoever wants to get some motivation in his life this is a handwritten note from kofi so yes. kofi is kofi is my guy um there is vicky fraser um i don't know if you know vicky but vicky, vicky is cool uh how the hell do you write a book that's the title and again it's uh for authors it's, it's really cool and I have I have notes from her as well here, so yeah. This is this is the LinkedIn family, and this is what it enables, you know. So I love that. Yeah, yeah. right. The last question is your walk up song, and I mean, now that you like won't rap, and I I forgave you. It doesn't mean that you don't have something that you're jamming out to all the time that like gets you up. Maybe it's when they're 
calling you on stage, or maybe it's just like when you're hanging out and, you know, doing it with your son. Like, what is your walk-up song? To tell you the truth, my walk-up song is pretty aggressive. It's Till I Collapse by Eminem. Ooh. So it really gets me going. I don't care how tired I'm feeling. I feel tired a lot. I don't care how much I have to do. I always have a lot of work to do. But when I hear that, I'm like, I'm not tired. None of this workload matters. Like, I'm going to get it done. Like, I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how far out it is. I'm going to get it done. And Till I Collapse by Eminem. That's my walk-up song. Well, I don't even know what else to say. I'm grateful, grateful that you came on the show and shared as much as you did. I want you to know that you are reaching people with your unbelievable willingness to help them to, to really not just do better on LinkedIn, but to become better writers, to become systemized thinkers in how they're looking at, at, at problem solving, and also mostly to be able to build that engagement and make our, our world a much smaller, friendlier, wonderful heartfelt place. And from me to you, Yasmin, thank you so much for everything that you've taught me. And I so appreciate it. And so, of course, we'll put the link in in case you're not following <laughs> you, but it just, um, just means a lot, you know? Thank you so much, Lauren. That warms my heart. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Just thank you. Genuinely, my thank pleasure. you. All right. Well, if you've liked this episode, please rate yourself a little LinkedIn or a, a, a comment down below or put a podcast review together. Thanks for tuning in. I know that this was two-parter, so this is the end of part two, and we're going to go ahead and get this thing up on the airwaves so everybody can benefit. So thank you again, and have a great, great rest of your day. Thank you for joining today. We appreciate your listening ears. Big time. We ask this. Use these tools, not tomorrow, right now, and share them by spreading the love. Leaving us a rating and subscribe so you don't miss the next career blast in a half. Most of all, thank you for you.